Hi everybody, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. We've talked a lot over the last three years for very obvious reasons about all the different ways that we can treat viruses, medications, natural ways, etc. Obviously, this was something which was very much on people's minds. How do we treat viruses? Now, I've talked a lot about the fact that viruses have always been very difficult to treat and the mainstay for mild viral infections has always been simple, conservative, supportive measures. Treating viruses has never been like treating bacterial infections or at least for the last hundred years or so when we've had medicines like antibiotics which are absolutely amazing when people come into hospital with overwhelming bacterial sepsis we have intravenous antibiotics that can rapidly reverse the situation but the same is not true and has never been true for viruses now at the beginning of this pandemic i made a video about all of the natural ways that people can recover at home if they get afflicted by the pandemic virus. And the link to that video is down below. It's got over 2 million views. And I focus on many simple common sense measures, but I do touch upon vitamin D and also antioxidants. But there is one very potent antioxidant that I also believe we haven't talked about anywhere nearly enough over the last couple of years or so. And I've been reading more and more studies highlighting how potentially beneficial this is. And keep in mind that many of the quote-unquote establishment therapeutics, when you actually look into the data, crunch the numbers, the benefits are very marginal indeed. So why not do anything you can, which is entirely natural? So what is this potent magic? Shall I use the word magic? I'm always hesitant to do that, but I do think in many ways its effects are pretty magical when you look at scientific data, but they are certainly amazing. This particular antioxidant is contained in a very common food. What is the food? Turmeric. Yes, good old-fashioned turmeric, a staple in the diet of many Eastern countries. And why is turmeric so potentially beneficial? Well, it contains a compound called curcumin, which gives turmeric its yellow color, and it is a very potent antioxidant. And there have already been a multitude of studies on the health benefits of turmeric, anti-inflammatory effects shown in many different diseases ranging from arthritis to other inflammatory disorders to metabolic disorders. These studies are all already out there. But I want to focus on why turmeric may have been very beneficial for this particular virus that we've been dealing with over the last three years. Take a look at these studies. So here's a study that was published in Viruses in 2021. Turmeric root and its bioactive ingredient curcumin effectively neutralize SARS-CoV in vitro. So here's the abstract here. I will share the full links to these studies down below. The application of turmeric root in herbal medicine has a very long history, indeed it does. Its bioactive ingredient curcumin shows a broad spectrum antimicrobial activity. In this study, they investigated the antiviral activity of aqueous turmeric root extract, the dissolved content of a curcumin containing nutritional supplement capsule, and pure curcumin against SARS-CoV. And what they found was that the turmeric root extract, dissolved turmeric capsule content, and pure curcumin effectively neutralized the virus at subtoxic concentrations. Furthermore, curcumin treatment significantly reduced the SARS-CoV RNA levels in cell culture supernatants. Our data uncover curcumin as a promising compound for complementary treatment of the virus. And they call for more studies on this. So that's very interesting, but what about the use of turmeric or curcumin for any of the specific symptoms associated with the virus? Well, here we have another study published in 2021. Turmeric as a possible treatment for viral-induced anosmia and agusia. Anosmia is loss of smell and agusia is loss of taste, two very common symptoms of the virus. So this was a small study, but they said that this case series reports the speedy and consequential restoration of taste and smell in two subjects infected with the virus following ingestion of one 1,000 milligram dose of turmeric supplement. In view of this, we propose that turmeric be considered in the treatment of anosmia and agusia caused by the infection. And have there been any larger studies on this topic then? 
Well, yes, they have. Here is a systematic review. Effectiveness of curcumin on outcomes of hospitalized viral patients. A systematic review of clinical trials. And this was actually published in 2022. Despite the ongoing jab efforts, there is still an urgent need for safe and effective treatments to help curb the debilitating effects of the virus. This was a systematic review. They reviewed the databases extensively of medical studies, and they identified six studies which showed that curcumin supplementation led to a significant decrease in common symptoms, duration of hospitalization, and deaths. In addition, all of these studies showed that the intervention led to amelioration of cytokine storm effects thought to be a driving force in severe cases. They talk about the various pro-inflammatory cytokines, and they say that taken together, these findings suggested that curcumin exerts its beneficial effects through at least partial restoration of pro-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory balance. Very interesting. In conclusion, curcumin supplementation may offer an efficacious and safe option for improving disease outcomes. We highlight the point that future clinical studies of the disease should employ larger cohorts of patients in different clinical settings with standardized preparation of curcumin related compounds. So I must say I do have a soft spot for turmeric given my ethnic background. My parents are first generation immigrants from India to England and I grew up eating a lot of Indian food which contains turmeric. But there are so many studies out there, feel free to do a literature search yourself, which show the beneficial health effects of turmeric. But do you know who hates studies like this? They absolutely despise these types of studies being done. The big pharma companies, the drug companies. The last thing they want is for everybody to start thinking there are simple, cheap, effective, natural remedies out there. They don't want people to think that for a moment. But I'm telling you, not just turmeric, but there are many other potent superfoods out there which have an immense anti-inflammatory effect on the body. So drug companies will do everything possible to stop people from getting this type of information. But I would like to see larger studies in the future and I'm sure that they will likely show significant effects, not just for this virus, but other viral syndromes. So how should you consume turmeric then? Well, I'm a big fan for doing things as naturally as possible. Turmeric can easily be added to many foods. Obviously those particular studies used supplements which can also be used but be very careful when you add turmeric to food or even take a supplement because turmeric is not easily absorbed and you can increase the absorption of turmeric multiple fold by adding black pepper or a healthy fat to it that will significantly increase the amount of turmeric that you absorb i'll talk about this more another time as well as how much turmeric you should be consuming but suffice to say for now it is a great great compound and as long as there's no reason why you can't tolerate it obviously everybody is different if you've never had it before be careful initially adding it to your diet it can cause some digestive issues initially most people however can tolerate it very well so if I was to make that video again, the video that has over 2 million views on home remedies for this particular pandemic virus, I touched on vitamin D, other antioxidants, other simple common sense things that you can do and people seem to respond well to that video. But if I was to make it again, I would definitely have a special mention for turmeric. In fact, thinking about it, even though I may not have had the evidence until relatively recently for turmeric with viral infections, as long as I can remember actually since I moved away from home, if I ever felt myself coming down with a viral syndrome, cold-like symptoms, I would always go for Indian food. I'd either order some takeout or cook it myself at home. I always felt like it was a good thing to do whenever I had those types of symptoms. So maybe I was naturally drawn to that turmeric or other anti-inflammatory nasal clearing effects of Indian food. Who knows? But there you go then for turmeric can be added to lots of different foods. It doesn't have to be Indian food, but it has been around for thousands and thousands of years, particularly in Eastern culture. So let me know your thoughts down below. Are you a fan of turmeric? Would you consider using it in the future now? Have you seen any other studies? Feel free to comment. Thanks everyone for listening. Check out my online academy and my uncensored platform. Those links are down below. Master your metabolic health and beat the establishment. Hit the like button if you like this video and the bell button for more similar videos in the future. We will talk again very soon.